I'm a urologist. Uh, I only work in prostate cancer. I use MRI throughout that whole pathway to direct what we do. I, the only sort of treated men that I would see on a routine basis would be men who've had vocal treatment with our team or men who've had radiotherapy, the cancer has come back and they're looking at a second treatment. Some men will have a tiny bit of cancer on a biopsy and their local doctor said surveillance is a good thing. Sometimes the MRI says, well, the biopsy found a little bit of cancer down here, but it looks like there's more up there. I think often at the beginning, everyone's anxiety is quite high and it seems sometimes helpful to have that check to have another biopsy the MRI gives a much more complete picture of the whole prostate and it's painless and improve infection and all of those things in the UK I think we were the first country to say that every man who might be suitable for radical treatment should have an MRI before a biopsy there are some problems sometimes with with quality of the MRI scan we do use contrast in our hospital and we find it's really helpful to detect some tumours and particularly to detect change and to detect recurrences either after radiotherapy or after focal therapy. So our MRI is about 40 minutes. We don't use an endorectal coil so there's nothing in the back passage. We use a, a pelvic coil which is a little bit like a small blanket which just goes over, over the pelvis. And that can often be a difference between the US and the UK. But it's still, you know, 40 minutes, you have your headphones on to stop you being so bothered by the noise. Some men can't tolerate it because they're claustrophobic. I mean, you know, we can put people in, we have some scanners that have a wider, a wider bore, a wider hole to go through. And you can go in feet first. And if you're tall, that's an advantage because you've got enough of you outside to sort of breathe. If you're shorter, then you're still within the scanner. So, you know, different things. But but yeah, about 40 minutes for our for our usual scan. So there's the, the multi-parametric bit of the MRI means there's multiple parameters. So we have some anatomical imaging sequences. And one set of those is the T2 weighted images. And in that we're looking at dark areas that mean cancer or that can mean cancer so we look at that we also look at the diffusion weighted imaging so diffusion you might remember from science at school is the movement of molecules and you know you do that thing with smoke and all the rest of it so in a prostate cancer and other cancers water can't move freely like it does in non-cancerous tissue so then you get restricted diffusion and that shows up on the MRI image as a, as a bright spot that so we scroll through looking for the bright spots and then see if they match up with the dark spots on the, on the T2 anatomical image. And then when we give contrast, cancers have a disorganized blood system. So they take up the contrast very quickly, but they also lose it very quickly. So we do dynamic contrast, which means you give the contrast and then you scan very quickly afterwards for quite a few uh, for about sort of five minutes taking scans quite quickly and we look at that to see if there's contrast coming in earlier to that same area that looks suspicious on the other two bits. So we actually ask our radiologist to give us a confidence score and we ask them to say on a scale of one to five how likely is this to be a cancer and then when we're trying to decide who needs a biopsy based on that we look at how much PSA there is for the size of the prostate and that measurements of PSA over the prostate volume in mils. That's called the PSA density. So there are actually two scoring systems. Um, PIRADS is the international scoring system. And in fact, I, I sit on the, the PIRADS committee. And that's a really well worked up way of teaching people how to score and of the international community talking to each other, knowing we're meaning the same thing when we're describing something. We do also sometimes use just a Likert scale, so a continuous scale that is less rigorously scored. And that means it's a bit more adaptable for things like when somebody has a hip replacement and you can't see some of the sequences. Pyrads isn't great at accounting for that. And, and we will sometimes use the Likert score as well. It's very often actually doctors and lawyers who say, why do I have to have a biopsy? Can't you just treat me? I am keen to biopsy for a couple of reasons. One, if we do enough biopsies, then we'll miss people in that 2% and we'll treat somebody who's actually got an infection in the prostate 
and they'll have a treatment that they didn't need. So there's that small possibility. The other thing is to see what grade of tumor it is. So sometimes I'll do a biopsy to see where on the Gleason scale it lies, because if it's, sometimes we get small things that are actually quite high risk on, on the Gleason score, so have a high Gleason score, and then we'll say, well, actually we should step in here with a treatment when based on the MRI alone, we might have said, well, it's small, we can monitor it for a while. Yeah. So it, yeah, I, I don't tend to treat with acid biopsy, but I can see that it's an attractive idea. And I think in due course, we might change our minds on that. Right. The reason I would always want an MRI scan is that a third of men who would get a biopsy based on their PSA alone can safely avoid that by having an MRI. So, you know, that, I think that's one of the big advantages of it, that it spares men from having to have a biopsy to check whether it's cancer or not, because between a third and a half can be reassured based on the MRI. But it's really about treating the thing that needs to be treated and leaving alone things that don't need treatment. And when you look at the side effects of prostate cancer treatments, they tend to be not related to exactly what's inside the prostate, but what's around the edges. So the nerves that govern sexual function, the sphincter that helps with continence. And if we can focus the treatment, so instead of treating the whole thing and just treat the cancer that could cause a problem, then you get a real advantage. Focal therapy works best when you have a smallish tumor on one side of the prostate and you it's ideal to be able to see it on the MRI scan. And it'd be pretty rare for me to treat just based on a biopsy if I couldn't see anything on the MRI scan. So the MRI tells you where the tumor is. It tells you how close it is to critical things. So particularly how close it is to the sphincter muscle that keeps you dry and how close it is to the edge of the prostate. And when I'm planning a treatment, I take the tumor volume that I see on MRI and I add a margin of, of, of treatment around it because sometimes the tumor is larger on in, in actual fact than, than it appears on MRI. That's why we treat with a margin to encounter those legs, if you like. I haven't heard that analogy before, actually. But yeah, we see that certainly the body of it on the MRI scan and the, and the little legs, we, we treat with a margin around what we see on the MRI scan. Now, it is possible that there's some non-visible cancer on the other side that we don't treat. And sometimes we'll know about that cancer and intentionally not treat it. Sometimes, uh, you know, we haven't done a very intense biopsy. But what we know about, particularly from our surveillance program, is that small cancers that you can't see are much less risky than the small cancers that you can see. So I'm happy not treating stuff that I, that I, that I can't see because the risk of it causing a problem within the next 10 years is pretty low. At my hospital, we have PSMA to look at whether there might be cancer outside of the prostate. And we'd use a combination of those two, depending on the setting. The PSMA is a, is a, a nuclear medicine uh, technique and the images that you get with the nucle nuclear tracer are quite sort of vague. So you match them up either to a CT or an MRI scan. We have some PET-MR facility, we have some PET-CT facility, but PET-CT is, is fine. So it's a combination of the, the radioactive tracer and some imaging to show you exactly where that is.